Hey everybody, welcome back to my shop. I've had a very busy week this week, so I figured we'd do a real quick skill builder project and do this little butt vase. But please remember, this is not an instructional video and is meant for entertainment purposes only. Your safety is your responsibility. Well, let's get started. So we're just starting out with this random board. I took it from my family cabin. It was sitting in the log pile. And I think it used to be some sort of brace for the old dock we had. And uh, that's why it's got all this crazy weathering. I'm sure it's a softwood. But I'm not sure if it's a, a fir or what kind of wood it is. So if anybody has an idea, please fire that off in the comment section below. But yeah, let's get this milled up to size and we'll put it between centers and we'll get going. As I cut this, I could kind of get a slight hint of turpentine or something like that. Just shaping a small tenon so we can grab it in the chuck. So I've now got it held in the chuck with a little bit extra tailstock support. And I'm just going to take lighter cuts with this because I don't want to risk chipping off any of this weathered side because I want to try to include that. So we're just going to start out about 1400 RPM. I'm going to use a combination between my 4040 bowl gouge and my spindle gouge. I'm going to start with the bowl gouge to kind of deal with all this air gap problem. Stuff seems harder than it looks. We're going to go up to about 1600 RPM. It's getting a little closer to what I'm looking for. I'm going to switch over to the spindle gouge now to refine the shape and try to get a little bit cleaner of cut. Okay, let's drill a hole. Just got a half inch Forstner bit chucked up here. Make sure you're clearing the chips. I don't have a draw bar holding my drill chuck in here, so I'm pulling back on the drill chuck every time I drill in. If that drill chuck wants to loosen off in the Morse taper, I'll be pulling it out so it won't get stuck in there, whip around and break my face. There we go. You know what, we might even go another half inch deep. I moved the drill bit, Forstner bit out a little bit just to get that little extra half inch. There. Now there's not a heck of a lot of support back here, but I want to open up this mouth just a little bit so it looks a little bit more refined. Go back up to 1600 RPM. Tail stock out of the way. I'm just going to take light, light little pull cuts.
There. See what a little bit of attention to detail can do to a piece? I like that. I want to give this thing a little foot before we go on to sanding. What do you think? Maybe it looks better without a foot. Yeah, the heck with the foot, no foot. Yeah, I like that actually a little better. I'm just getting all this rough wood out of the way so when we sand, we don't catch our fingers on it. Okay, let's go on to sanding. I'm just going to sand her down with 220, 320, and 400 grit sandpaper. While sanding around those areas that have the flat weathered spots, I make sure I put a bit of tension on the sandpaper so it stretches out flat and doesn't dip in and disturb them, because I want to preserve that weathered area just the way it is. Also, I reverse the direction of the lathe between each grits to try to pick up those wood fibers and sever them off a little bit more cleanly. So sanding's all complete and all the dust is wiped away, now we're just going to apply a finish. And I'm going to use some of this old tongue oil. Always remember to squeeze as much air as you can out of your containers if possible and your finishes will last a lot longer. So I'm going to just apply it on the lathe. We're going to apply a generous amount. Oh, oh no, we're going to have a mess to clean up. Oh well. But look at that grain pop out as soon as we put that on there. Well actually it's kind of... <laughs> Maybe it's actually hiding the grain a little bit. What do you think? Uh, we'll have to see once it sets in there. It's a nice warm color though, nonetheless. And that's the thing about finishing. Sometimes you think it's going to pop the grain out, sometimes it's going to hide it. It all depends. See, this is a, a soft wood, and so the later portion of the ring is much softer and lighter, I think, or the early portion is softer and lighter. And so what's happening is the finish is going into the softer portion, which is the lighter colored portion, a lot better than it's going into the darker portion. And so we're ending up with actually less figure in the end. Great, that's what we want. Anyways, lesson learned. I'm just gonna keep applying this finish generously here until we got her good and thoroughly soaked. And we'll come back when I'm all done with that. So maybe a shiny finish would have actually looked good, as we see when this is kind of wet with the fresh oil. But if I want it to be shiny, after this oil is kind of set up and cured, I can always buff on some wax and get that nice sheen on it. So, still, still surprised that the grain hit itself when we put the finish on it. That doesn't happen often. When it does, you know. When it does, it's kind of disappointing. <laughs> Something else we could have tried is we could have even lightly sanded these rough areas and have those raised portions show the clean wood through and then have the darker recessed, recessed portions remaining. So that's, that's a thought. Could have tried that. But, you know what? It's a nice little bud vase. They're not supposed to be the most amazing thing you ever turned. They're to give you some chance to practice creativity and shapes and use up those pieces of wood you just don't know what to do with. To part this off, I'm just going to use my parting tool, follow it up with my skew chisel. So we're just going to start laying back up to 1600. Take our time. I like to use the skew chisel towards the end to get a nice clean cut on the bottom. And I've undercut that bottom a little bit too, so that it'll sit on the outer edge, the other rim. There. And I parted it out away from the base on purpose so I don't tear out any fibers. I'm just going to hit this with some sandpaper, sign it and finish it, and this one's done.
Before we get to the end of the video, I'd like to do a couple shoutouts first. My first shoutout goes to Doug over at the Pole Barn Projects. He incorporates casting resins into his turnings, and lately he's been experimenting with a new type of concept called the Saturn Bowl, and he's actually making a two-part video series right now as we speak. So check the links in the description down below and go check them out. And my next shout out goes to Billy Burt over at the Messy Studio. He's a fellow wood turner, and if you ever want to know how to make a sign out of wood, you better go check his videos because he's got a great method. Links in the description down below. Thanks for tuning into this week's video. Like usual, I'll have some pictures of the finished product at the end. If you like the video, please click the like button and share it around. If you have any questions or suggestions for me, please fire those off in the comment section down below. Maybe also if you know what kind of wood this is. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'll have a new video every Friday. So thank you very much and have yourself a great day.